This program is brought to you by vinnie.co.uk. back champions league pool here on free sports we are really getting into the mix now we've already lost our first player this evening martin mcintosh can now no longer mathematically qualify through to the quarterfinals but there is still plenty in play in particular for our two opponents in the next match rob warren versus josh kane a win for either will take them on the brink of qualification it's all to play for Simon absolutely and it's where exactly where Josh and Rob would want to be the qualification is very much in their hands if they win their next two matches they are through so um, yeah Josh Josh and Rob have it in their control really um, feels winning, like, yeah sorry I was gonna say it really feels like we're almost following it almost like a poker flop in some ways we're really getting to that moment now where the final cards are being revealed. This is where it really starts to take shape tonight. Yeah, definitely. I think the result of this match can really tell us a lot about who's going to go through tonight because the winner is going to have a massive advantage and, and have the, the best opportunity to qualify through. Came at the break and he very nearly did what he did in his first match, which was to screw straight in to a pocket with the cue ball, but a red ball saved him. As it is, it's a dry break and Rob is at the table with a chance to make his mark in his second match of the night. Have to wait a little while to see Rob back at the uh, at the table. He was in our opening match against Martin That's McIntosh. In he won that one 3-2. It went the distance in terms of time. But Rob really did have the advantage in the latter stages of that one. Looked pretty good did Rob in that match in particular really had the tactical edge I thought over Martin in particular yeah definitely um, knows the rule set um, a lot better than Martin Martin's new to this rule set whereas he's been playing it for a couple of years uh, with some success as well so um, yeah definitely an advantage um, not the case this time though both Rob and Josh know these rules uh, probably as well as each other Oh, not to be for Rob Warren there. Let's see what he was trying. He's missed this double by about half an inch. Yeah, and it was probably frame ball as well because the rest of the reds were fairly simple. The black was there as well. Tricky little table here for yellows. Well, that solved one problem, which is the yellow over the middle pocket. The yellow at the top of the table is now the big problem. But you can see from this camera angle, see the yellow... Um, one of the either the yellow that he's nearest to or the yellow bit further up the table he can play off the red open up that pocket for the yellow at the top of the table we well, tried to play it off the red and he's, he feathered it but he didn't move it as far as he wanted he may now not try and play this one off the red he may just try and top through and play the the yellow clean to the top right hand corner if he lands on it uh, you'd expect him to make it and that's what he's done it's not a bad pattern this as a as a plan B as it goes. a little bounce on that bottom cushion just to not be as thin I think he's okay he can still just drop this in control the pace and he's controlled it well and a good visit to the table here for Josh starting this match you 
considering he had that awful start where his first two shots of the tournament hit the white. He has been almost perfect since then. Frame. Can't yeah, think of a impressive. mistake he's made since. No, I don't, nor can I. I think he's been very, very, very good since that moment. And um, that was a great visit table. Two problem balls when he walked to the table. Uh, developed them both in the first two, three shots and then made no mistakes in the clearance. Excellent start for Josh Kane. Next week, we go to group two. 14th of December. Andy Craig, Ollie Bale, John Sullivan, and Aaron Davies. A really, really good lineup. Once again, you can expect plenty more of those as we get into the new year. 2021 dawns with Sam Birch and Rob Chilton, Phil Harrison, and Zach Shepard. The shootout, King Jordan Shepard, is in Group 4. We'll see him on the 11th of January. We do take a bit of a Christmas break in the Champions League pool. A couple of weeks at the start of December, just to wet the old appetite. Frame number two, we'll trouble on to break. Trailing one frame to nil. In the Time new year. Women. Crunching break from Rob Warren. He'll be annoyed that that's dry because he caught them really well. Controlled the white well at the middle of the table as well. It's one of those where if you've got a break that good, you never ever want to break dry. Because this split here for the form that Josh is in Yellow is in play. looking ominous. Absolutely. You break big and dry is not a good recipe at uh, elite level pool. Oh. Going to lose a lot of frames if that happens. Not clean run to the line in this frame though for Josh Kane. The red and yellow to the top right hand corner are awkward. The red is blocking the yellow. A couple of ways he could deal with that. He could try and play into the red, the yellow at the top of the table. If he lands on that with an angle, he can develop in or kick the red out of the way. He could even play a three ball plant if he wanted to. I think that would be the the trickier choice to control. He will have already made a mi his mind up which way he wants to go. Well, he's queuing it up. I think it might well be the three ball plant. Well, hopefully he's pointing pointing out his roadmap for us. Well, maybe not now. He's left himself an angle on the yellow to the top left where he could just come on and off the cushion into the red and leave himself on the yellow over the pocket. I think that's definitely what he's going to play from the angle he's left. Oh no, he's going cushion first into the one over the pocket. Yeah, that was tricky. Were you surprised to see that option taken, given that he had a couple of other decent shouts? I was, because it's, you can see from this camera angle, it's an inch or two away from the pocket. Um, and because he left himself such a good angle on the yellow to the top left, where it would have been fairly controllable for him to just to screw on and off the side cushion and, and sort of kick into the centre of the red. Um, but when you're out there, you, can, you definitely see it differently. And I'm not going to say his choice of shot was a poor one. Still expecting him to make it the yeah. way he did. Yeah, I think that's the crux of it, wasn't it? It wasn't necessarily a poor choice, but it certainly was poor execution by Josh's high standards so far tonight. That's a clever little shot from Rob Warren. He's got himself a difficult shot now, though. Awkward queuing, too. He's executed what he wanted to achieve with moving the red, but this is now a very tough part. Might hold the key to the frame, though. Oh, lovely. That's lovely little not flick bad. as well. That's not bad at all. He'll take that all night. Yeah, lovely control. That was such a good shot from Hamper queuing at the top of the table. So going to be a frame winner. Very impressive Frank. stuff from Rob Warren as he ties the scores up. That really was an impressive visit to the table. Had one problem ball to solve. He solved it 
but then had to come up with that big shot from hampered queuing but he played it perfectly so um, and he played it at a really quick speed as well the 20 seconds a shot really isn't a problem for, for Rob at all yeah it isn't I, I noticed this in his when he was warming up on the competition table he, I, you know you sometimes see players warming up and you just think they're sort of just flying the queue around and just sort of just getting their arm going but he's played at that pace so he really does play at a real real right knots does Rob good to watch man from Stafford already this potentially decisive match in group one of the mini dot Kelly UK Champions League frame number three Josh like came to break one frame all to the wire Time what a piece in. with a potential five more to play oh that's going to come dry chance then what a chance for Rob Bourne Josh gives a rueful gaze at the table but it's not going to suck a ball down for him he's and caught he's, them pretty he, well he has and he's left Red the easiest play. of reds for Rob to get going at the table and I think either colour set had its merits he'd have taken either with such an easy opening ball this is a great chance now for Rob to go 2 on up all the reds in the open as you say black is the one ball I'm looking at that may need a little nudge I don't think it goes to the bottom left the yellow's blocking it into the right center so I think it's gonna have to, but he's got the thing is when you need a little nudge and when you need to play a cannon you want balls nearby so that you can do it with control and he's got all his four remaining reds left they're all very close to the black so if he needs a little nudge then he can should be able to work one out Rob is a top player in his own right, a supreme Masters winner. The way he's played this, I wonder whether the black does go. It w he couldn't play the cannon on that occasion, though, because he wouldn't have landed on the next red. But if he leaves his cannon to the last shot, then he is potentially going to sort of put all his eggs in one basket, if you like. And if he is straight, then he won't be able to get to that black. So, question is, does this black go? I think he's left himself the double. I don't think this black goes. He's accepted it. It is the double, and it wasn't there. You could just see from his facial expression, he didn't need any of the camera angles. He just knew when he'd come up straight on that red that he'd left himself a really tough shot. And he got the double quite badly wrong as well in the end. And it could be a costly mistake that because if you're going to miss, miss early. Missing the last ball on the table just leaves a training situation for your opponent. This should go with no questions asked for Josh Kane and the form he's been in since that opening game eventually started not great with two whites in off with his first two shots of the tournament but since then has barely hit a false note missing the second frame here off the cushion but other than that he's looked in a rather ominous mood Just trying to make sure he would have loved to get rid of the yellow on the left hand side earlier than this. Hasn't quite been as pinpoint as we've seen in this uh, so far tonight, but he's still in good shape. He's just got an awkward angle on this that he's just, he, he'd love to just to be able to stun this in, but the white's going towards the right hand side, so has to play it almost at that killing pace where the white doesn't travel too far. He's played that beautifully. 
so easy to, to play that too hard and the white finishes an extra foot across the table and then you've got an awkward shot on that last yellow. And an easy enough last couple of balls. So 2-1 in the offing for Josh Kane. It's been a really high standard of match, Simon, but worth pointing out as well that the clock has really dragged on a little bit because they've both had moments where they've got quite far into a break and then seeded the table over. Not long left in this match. We won't get the full four for either player, I don't think. This may go down to the shot clock. Let's take a look at the second group of... Champions League participants, groups five, six, seven, and eight. Some real headline names for you to look forward to in the new year. How about Geo Edgar against Chris Melling as a potential? The old guard versus the new. Yeah, Geo comes. We've seen him once on, on Free Sports already. He came in with a big reputation, a very young man from Scotland that's, uh, yeah, very very much being touted as a you know very big name in the game you know people are already people saying that this, he could be a future world champion and uh, putting pressure on the young man to say that but Number he's four. got uh, uh, so far what we've seen from him he is a fantastic young player Time and running. I really look forward to seeing how his career develops you could over wish for a better education as a player like Gio than to, to play one of the best to ever do it absolutely and he comes across as a really nice uh, young lad as well yeah, absolutely. Really looking forward to that one and so many other matches that this competition will throw up. And naturally, when you look at the lineup of of players, you start to make your sort of fantasy tournaments and your, your dream lineups for quarterfinals and beyond. There are some potentially mouth-watering matchups. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's going to be fascinating to see which players get through, which of the top, top names manage to survive yeah, these group play. stages. Because I think these matches are so difficult the players are so good it you, doesn't matter how good you are if your opponent gets the opportunities and you don't and they make the clearances then you're, you're not going to win the matches but um, yeah we we, could, uh, we really could be in for some thrillers as we go through this competition just going back to this match you mentioned that uh, we may not um, see the clock fully run out uh, the match clock run fully run out but there are no, no players going to get to four and this frame probably is going to kill that completely because it's such a tight frame also worth pointing out to um, to the viewers that especially those that have just joined us that we're playing a new rule set tonight so in that situation there that wasn't a foul from Josh it was just a turning the table over it also wasn't a foul from Rob either as he played that red there the object ball didn't hit a cushion after contact that's no longer a rule that we we abide we're used to in the black ball form of the game tactical frame for these two to battle it out then and it's such a key frame but that could be the breaker what a good shot that is from Rob Warren I think Josh will probably be sat in his chair happy for Rob to take these on he's looking at the red by the black he's looking at the red nearest the bottom right hand corner and he's thinking they're tricky even the one nearest the bottom left hand corner there's a yellow just above it that's limiting what you can do and where you can pot it from so lots and lots of work for Rob to do here Yes, some shot, but he's going to need some more where that came from in this frame to take him over the line. And again, it's worth pointing out that's not a foul. I know so many of you will be used to black ball rules where you see that shot and it would be regarded as a foul, but he's played his ball. He's allowed to put his opponents in that shot in that way. All it is is loss of turn. So Josh plays from this situation. So. A very clever shot from, from Rob. And Josh returns the favour. Simple for Rob Warren to snooker Josh back. What Josh needs to do here to be careful of is not opening up that red and black. Well, he has opened up the red and black, but he'll be happy with that. 
and he holds up his hand because he got very fortunate there. This is a right touch. <laughs> this is this is as good a fluking a pot as there is because it's frame over if that yellow doesn't cover the pocket. Yeah, Rob's having it. Rice smile. Bit of a hit and Chris. And it's all going on out there. Run out of time and had to just hit and hope. Once again, no foul committed. Now I think these three should be there for Josh. Rob just lost track of it with that last shot. He was very rushed. He was faced with a problem that he wasn't expecting to face. I suppose that's part of it, isn't it? When you're sat in your chair watching your opponent play, you're sort of thinking already in your head of possibilities of what happens when they miss it and what you're looking at. There's just no way you can predict what happened with that, with that last shot from Josh to, to leave Rob in that sort of predicament. He had such little time to think about it. He did have an extension mind, which might have been worth using at that juncture. I think he probably realised that he was only ever going to hit and hope anyway, so it was a very fortunate shot, okay. it has to be said. And he's already, you know, even now he's still raised his hand to, to apologise because he knows how lucky he got there to get that opportunity. Um, but he'll be happy to be 3-1 in front, that's for sure. Well, you can say that again. He's almost there, is Josh Kane. Tactical frame. Navigated. These two, as we mentioned, currently top of the tree as things stand. The game Josh. ended now. Josh would be one point away from securing his place in the quarterfinal. Just looking at the table there, if Josh wins this match, he goes to four points. He'll be playing Martin. A point against Martin would be enough. He would be through as the group winner. Yeah, which would leave that last match as a dead rubber. Rob and Jimmy would both be able to do nothing to stop the qualification of Josh Kane. They've both got to hope, should Josh Kane win this match, that Martin McIntosh comes back to beat Josh Kane. It could, therefore, set us up for a two-way shootout, but let's not get ahead of ourselves, eh? Yeah, I think the one thing we're sure frame of, that uh, uh, things break. are very much in Josh Kane's, ha to one. Kane's hands right now, because he's firm favourite for this match. There's only two and a half minutes left on, or sorry, three and a half minutes left on the clock. 3-1 in front, big advantage. Well, he's not going to make a ball. And Rob's got a chance here. Just a tough opening shot. A little unlucky he didn't have more to go out there. You have the white ball landing in the bottom of the table with that many balls around it. You're expecting to be able to play something. It was a really tough opener. It's a strange one, though. I think he had an easier pot to the bottom left, but he's taken on the harder pot. Red ball's in play. No rush here from Josh whatsoever. No no reason to try and push the boat out, go up for any tough finish, just uh, keep the frame tight, make it tough for your opponent, kill that match clock. I've seen it so often in the shootout. Clock management is very important. Doesn't look particularly pleased that last visit does Josh there. Looks a touch concerned. He really wanted to block up this left-hand pocket and he hasn't, I think that's the reason. Rob wanted to open it up. He wanted both those reds by the pocket to come away when he played that shot off the red so that the yellow nearby would go. It doesn't. It'd still have to play. It does go to the, the opposite corner pocket, but the positional shot would have to be very precise. Not much room to land on at all. He could leave himself on an angle, the one nearest the right-hand corner pocket, that he could play a cannon into the last ball, but you are... You know, it's not guaranteed that you'll knock it into a position to be able to pot it. He 
does just about have enough angle. It's tight. He might actually screw across the face of the red to try and leave himself thin on the yellow. Yeah. Go into it just a fraction too much, too high up the table. This is now incredibly thin. Pretty much will be that in terms of Rob's chances, barring something very strange here from Josh Kane. 44 seconds on the clock, he just needs to pot two balls. And he puts himself in pole position to qualify as the winner of Group 1 in doing so. Just needs to avoid defeats. To Martin McIntosh to make sure. We're pointing out as well that even if Josh loses his next game, he's guaranteed a shootout position with four points. It's true. Matt's just came. He's more than happy to let the clock wind down. He may meet Rob later on in a shootout, but Josh Kane has this tournament, Group 1, in his own hands. A win in the next match against Martin McIntosh will qualify Josh Kane through to the quarter-final rounds. It was an accomplished performance, Simon, from a player that's really impressed us so far tonight. Yeah, well, you said it best, I think. He, he, his first two shots of the night were both fouls. He put the white both times off the break and then his first visit after the break. Ever since then, he's been... I can only think of one sort of half a mistake he's made. He's been very clinical with the way he's played. Although it has to be said, this match kind of turned on that massive bit of luck he had in in, uh, in, in the fourth frame. It looked like it was going 2-2 or it would be a chance for 2-2. Massive bit of luck and he gets himself that 3-1 lead. He certainly did and didn't relinquish it. The uh, fifth game of the night is coming up. It's Kane versus McIntosh when we return. This programme is brought to you by vinnie.co.uk.